All right, guys, day one, chest and biceps. What's so as, up? As always, we like to start with a bit of a warm up. I'm gonna be your test subject for today. Mike's gonna be the trainer. He was a certified trainer many years ago. Uh, so he's gonna be talking throughout the moves, showing you the proper balance, the proper position, form. and form, and how to do everything correctly. All right, so here we go. All right, let's do this. So Carlos is gonna start with your basic push-ups with just the toes on the ground. Don't worry that if you just started working out and you feel tired after the third push-up, you can always drop your knees in order to do a knee push-up. And don't think that knee push-ups do not work. Knee push-ups absolutely work. We both use them. Let me show you what a bad knee push-up would look like. Go for it, Carlos. That's a bad knee push-up. Also, bring the elbows forward. When you're getting tired, when you're coming up, bring them forward. But you never want to lock out your shoulders because you end up hurting your shoulders. As you start with regular push-ups, I want you to drop on your knees and get minimum 12 to 20 push-ups when you're warming up, okay? So this is, again, another angle to show you what a good push-up looks like. Again, the elbows are below the shoulders. You also don't want to tuck them in completely because you'll pronate and focus more on the tricep. We're trying to focus here on the chest. So look at the elbows, they're below the shoulders. Now go ahead and give me a bad push-up and drop on your knees. That's a bad push-up. You see how your shoulder is elevated with the elbow? You never want this because you'll damage your shoulders. What I want you to get used to is as you go down, they're called negative ac accentuated sets. You're slowing down on the negative side. So the positive would be the explosion coming up. The negative would be coming down. Reason why is you're about 1.75 to two times stronger on the negative side of the muscle. So when you explode, you're contracting one face of the muscle. When you're coming down, you're, you're contracting the second face of the muscle. You wanna strengthen both in order to feel and have that solid look. So now we moved on to a bicep workout. We like to follow all our chest exercises with bicep. One of the reasons is because basic mechanics, anything that you push, you're engaging primarily your chest, secondary your tricep. We like to start with a bar to actually, instead of dumbbells, to work out the biceps the same because you can fatigue the joints when you're using dumbbells. So Carlos is gonna demonstrate what a bicep workout looks like. Reason why we start with palms up we wanna hit the inner part of the bicep first. So the bicep is broken down into two parts. If you look at my arm, if I flip and rotate my wrist, look how the bicep rotates. So right now we're hitting the inner head of the bicep. We like to fall between eight to 12 repetitions. Why? Once you're in your 40s, 50s, 60s, we find that through the studies, mechanically speaking, eight to 12 repetitions is the healthiest amount of reps you should be doing in order to stimulate protein synthesis. So if you don't make it to eight, the weight is too heavy. If you make it to 12 with no problem, the weight is too light. Basically, we're trying to stimulate protein synthesis within the eight to 12 reps. We like to do three sets per exercise. So maybe the first set, you do 12 reps, Second set, you hit 10 reps. Third set, you hit eight reps. I'm definitely over 12. Huh? No, of course, you, you, basically, you, you keep going, okay? <laughs> this is what happens when you do treatment. You can do 100 uh, bicep curls and it won't be a problem. So, the purpose is, as you drop down in reps, you wanna increase the weight. And you'll start to understand this the more you exercise. But most importantly, look how he's doing the bicep curls. I don't want you to bring up your elbows because now you're putting your, that's, what's wrong. You Now you're working out your shoulders into the exercise. You wanna have a full extension of the bicep and a full uh, contraction of the bicep. So you're never doing this. Show them again what's bad. That's bad form. Good form, right there. You're only flexing and focusing the isometric contraction on the flexion of the bicep, extension of the bicep. Let's move on to the next exercise. So here's our second chest exercise. We always like to start with body weight because when we move on to our third or fourth exercise, we like to go heavier. Remember, of course, this is always staying between that eight to 12 repetition mark that we spoke about. Always when you're doing a dip, you want your body slightly tilted forward. You don't wanna fall vertically on a line. And here's the only time, like we showed you on the push-ups that you don't want your elbows aligned, you can, le you can let the elbows out and you won't have that issue. So the more you let your elbows out, the more you're hitting the lower part of the pack. If you bring them in really close, 
you're hitting more of the tricep, which could also be another tricep workout for you. Now go ahead and one more time, open up the elbows. This is hitting the bottom pec, okay? When you're doing uh, push-ups, you're hitting the entire pec. This is focusing on the bottom aspect of the pec. Let's move on to the next exercise. So here is our second bicep workout. Remember what I taught you from the beginning? Look at my palms, look at the bicep. If I turn the palms down, look how the bicep extends. Every angle that you move your hands, you're gonna hit different muscle fibers. You have about 700 something muscle fibers, so every angle is gonna hit it differently. So on the previous exercise, we hit the inner head of the bicep. It's called the bicep because it's broken down into two parts. Now we're gonna hit the lateral, the exterior part of the bicep. Notice how he's not lifting his shoulders. It's all about form. So when you start getting tired, most people start to have bad form, which that would be bad form. Now you're, now you're bringing in the shoulder into the workout, which right now we're trying to focus on the lateral head of the bicep. So that's the correct way of doing it. There's only a flexion and extension of the elbow joint. There's no movement, notice, on the shoulder. This is what you wanna avoid. Number one most important, key when you're working out, it's all about form. You could also use this cable, same thing, you're hitting more of the lateral head. Remember what I said about the rotation of my palm? If I'm here, this exercise is gonna be different. It's gonna hit different fibers on my bicep. We'll cover that. All right. So here's our third chest exercise. This is where we start increasing the intensity. Remember, eight to 12 reps is what we focus on. So before you start, always I like when you're gonna lift, first of all, have a spotter if you're gonna lift heavy. Second of all, use these clips on the weights in case you lose control, the weights don't fall off and you make a mess and you embarrass yourself in the gym. So make sure you use the clips, have a spotter specifically if you're gonna lift heavy. Unless you know your, your strength and your body, you may do this exercise alone. So once again, if you're gonna lift heavy, you want somebody to help you spot the barbell from the, from the startup point to the point of where you're gonna be bench pressing. So you want somebody to help you lift it is what I'm trying to say. For the sake of this purpose, we're using very light weight, so it's not a problem. Now, when you come down, you wanna keep four fingers off your chest. Yes, could you go lower? Absolutely. But what happens is you're hyperextending your shoulder girdle and you're eventually gonna damage your shoulders. So for the purpose of strengthening your body and doing the proper form and not hurting your body, always think rule of thumb, four fingers off your chest, which is about four inches. That's where you don't wanna drop any further. Can you get a little more results if you're a bodybuilder? Sure, but you, if you're doing this just to keep your body strong, that's unnecessary, guys. So once again, eight to 12 reps. Remember what we spoke about the concentric and eccentric side of the muscle? Here's the eccentric, here's the concentric. Slow on the eccentric, explosion on the concentric. Slow on the negative, explosion on the positive. That goes for your chest, for your back, whatever muscle you're working out. This is what bad form looks like. Boom, bouncing off the chest. They drop the bar fast and they try to just work out the concentric. That's when they're, they, they're strong, but they're weak. If you touch them, their muscles are not solid and they don't have a lot of density because they're only working one face of the muscle. So once again, here's the right form. Four inches off your chest, negative, explode on the positive, slow on the negative, explode on the positive. So another variation you can use is dumbbells. Now you can use the traditional incline dumbbell press. You can also use the neutral position, and you can also go to the reverse position. Remember what I said about hitting different muscle fibers? You wanna always have more dynamic on the movements. And you can also do a variation of the three, which is what we really like to do. See, you can reverse them. You can reverse them at the bottom or at the top. Notice how he flips the weights differently. Here he flipped them at the bottom, here he flips them at the top. Again, keep more dynamic in the movement so you try to hit every fiber as possible. Let's move on to the next exercise. So for the third bicep exercise, we're gonna focus again on what side? On the inner head of the bicep. So there's different variations. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna show you the front one. Now, notice as you're working out, 
When you start to fatigue, they're called the mortar neurons. Your brain has to send a signal to basically a little engine inside of your muscle to engage and have a contraction. When you feel that you're not getting to the eight or 12 repetitions we spoke about, you can start going one arm at a time. So start doing single bicep curls. Notice how he's focusing on one. The reason why you do that is because instead of distributing the motor neurons 50-50, now you're focusing all those motor neurons on one arm at a time until you can get into the eight to 12 repetitions. Once again, if you don't make it too eight, it's too heavy. If you make it past 12 with no problem, it's too light. We're trying to stimulate protein synthesis in the muscle properly in order for you to not only grow some of your muscle, but to preserve the muscle mass. This is another variation of bicep curls to hit the inner head of the bicep, out to the sides. So maybe one week you use the front, maybe another week you use the outside bicep curl. So now we're gonna do hammer curls. This is again focusing on the lateral side of the bicep. Now flip them completely down, palms down. You can also do this form for the lateral head of the bicep. Go up and turn them, palms up, come down. Same way, palms up, face down. That's another form of using the bicep uh, lateral and inner head. Now, what I don't want you to do when you're fatiguing, give me a bad curl. Exactly. Look how he's leaning his body, putting pressure on his back. All right, so now that we showed you all the bicep pros and cons, we're moving on to the next exercise. So here's the fourth chest exercise. Now, before you start, typically you'll find within the barbell, there's a very soft part within the grip. Usually, depending on how wide you are, you might need to use your pinky, ring finger, or middle finger. You don't wanna be too out or too in. So when you go down, if you look at my shoulders, you wanna form half a square. You don't wanna be in like this, nor over here, because you're gonna stress the shoulder girdle. So let's show you how this is done. Once again, remember to put on the clips if you're gonna lift heavy and have somebody to spot you. So three, two, one. So this is what good form looks like from a different angle. Remember, four inches off the chest, which is usually your four fingers. Now, this is what bad form looks like. Bouncing it off the chest, hyperextending the shoulders, and focusing on a number rather than the mechanisms of the muscle fibers and the motor neurons. Beautiful. Now, once again, this is the other variation to the standard bench press. You're using dumbbells here. This is the standard position. Now, the neutral position is here. Now, the reverse position is here. And now, you can do a variation of the three. Notice how you can, you can rotate them from the bottom or you can rotate them from the top. The more dynamic movement, the better. Don't forget that. And now we're done with chest and biceps.